Good evening, everyone. I am actually a scientist, but at the moment, I'm temporarily a politician. And when you enter a completely new environment, you learn to ask questions that you had never asked before. I have used images from Pompeii, the mosaics and the frescoes, to try and pose to you a question, and maybe we can come up with a good answer. And the question is, is STEM education for girls a good investment? What is STEM? STEM is science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. And the whole world is talking about, girls, you need to do STEM. You need to do science. Girls love STEM. Girls and STEM. Girls in STEM. As Ricardo mentioned, a Nobel Prize winner, and I don't want to create any more trouble for this guy, um, mentioned uh, at a big conference that he had had trouble with girls in labs. And I promise you, there's lots of girls in labs. Let's look at a few numbers. This is what the Italian situation is like. If you look at the total number of students enrolled at university, there are 57% girls. And if you look at certain areas, the medical area, earth and life, chemistry and pharmacy, we are over 60% girls enrolled. And we hope that this gir these girls are going to do well. I am a veterinarian by training, although I never practiced, and I've been a virologist all my life. And, and I travel around the world and I give leadership talks for students. And in the field of veterinary medicine, over 80% of students are girls. 80%. So we know that women very rarely reach the top levels of management and they very rarely get all the way up to the top. These are the three graces. And if we have all these girls doing so well, um, we can say that young ladies have better academic performances than young men with respect to our young men, and particularly in the humanities, but also in biomedical disciplines. They get their PhDs, they get their masters, with higher marks and in a shorter period of time. And then what happens? They get lost. This is also in Pompeii. This is a maze. They get lost. So, Mr. Obama, about a year ago, came up with fighting for fairness. We need to fix the pay gap. If women obtained the same salaries that men do, they would be $431,000 better off. You can do a hell of a lot of things with $431,000, I assure you. And there's leaks in the academic pipeline. So at every step, if, you're, if you get married, we lose a percentage of girls. If you have a kid, you lose another percentage of girls. And the question that I have for you is this. Look at the academic performances. This is an X graph. Everybody knows about this graph. Men go up in the academic career and women go down. There's only 28% women full professors against 71% male professors. And this costs money. It costs money. Education is expensive. 
Look at these numbers. This comes from the higher, um, edu this is higher education data. The total income of British higher education is 27.9 billion pounds. Some universities are free, some universities are cheap, some are very expensive, like the American universities. And so Mr. Obama again said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to cut tuition fees and I'm going to help these students come out of university with a lower debt. And you know what this adds up to? $60 billion in 10 years. And here comes my question. Are we spending 60% of our resources for higher education to train individuals who will not succeed and who will not be able to express their talent and set of skills for a better world? Scientists work for a better world. And my question is, can we afford it? Does this make any sense at all? And you know what the answer is? The answer is no. I don't have an answer for it. I have three. And you know what the answers is? Are leadership, leadership, leadership. In this mosaic, or this fresco from Pompeii, there's a man, there's not a woman. And now I want to speak to the ladies. It's difficult to be a woman, isn't it? Look at them, they're all nodding. It's difficult. You want to be a, a mother, you want to be a sister, you want to be part of the family, you want to help the family out. It's difficult. Your heart is everywhere. And you want to be a mother. Lots of women want to be a mother. And it is appropriate that even if you want to have a great career, you can have a great career and be a mother. These things do not need to be mutually exclusive. And you know why? Because you need mothers to perpetuate humanity. And I can explain this better, but I don't have a lot of time. So ladies, ladies, I'm speaking to you, I'm speaking to the young girls in this theater. It's difficult. But there's just one thing that can be provided by yourself, and you don't need to rely on anyone, which is the drive. You need to have drive to emerge, to climb tough and slippery slopes, to start again you're going to make mistakes, to be the engine of change and to be proud of your achievements and of your success. So why can't girls have this dream of becoming a full professor, director general, a dean, a provost, a chancellor, a chief, a head, a senior consultant? What this is all about is like this octopus. He needs to bring all these things together. And this is, this is the real problem. It's bringing all these things together. So I now have another definition of STEM. STEM is not only science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, but science is, but STEM is science, training in leadership, economics, and motherhood. This is what new STEM is about. So let me give you my take-home messages. Girls should be able to express their talent in science. Girls are good. Girls are smart. Girls are excellent scientists. Education in STEM is expensive to the taxpayer, to the families, and to society as a whole. At the moment, the return on the investment is not proportionate to the success that these girls are having. 
So training in leadership is crucial to this return on investment. And as I said, motherhood keeps humanity going. You people wouldn't be here if you didn't have a mother, okay? And so, my dear audience, we need to have a plan. It doesn't make sense that we spend so much money in training these girls to not be successful. The most important thing is having a vision, and that's what we need for our new girl scientists. Thank you very much.